in this video, I'll be showing you how to get started with TextBlaze. To install the TextBlaze extension, visit blaze.today. Click the link at the top right. This will take you to the Chrome Web Store page, where you can download TextBlaze. Click Add to Chrome and Add Extension. This will download and install the extension. Next, you will be taken to the dashboard, where you can create a new account or log into an existing one. This is your dashboard. Here, you'll find your folders, which will contain your snippets. Snippets are like templates or bits of text that you use repeatedly. And you can recall them anywhere in your browser by typing a shortcut. Snippets have three main parts. The label, which is a friendly name that you use to identify your snippet. The shortcut, which is what you type to insert your snippet. And the body of the snippet itself, which contains what you want to show up when you insert your snippet. Let's start by creating a folder to keep our snippets organized. Now, let's create a new snippet. We'll give it a descriptive label to make it recognizable and a shortcut, which can be any combination of characters. It's best that you make it something that's easy to remember. Finally, we'll paste our text in the contents window here. You can click on the Preview tab to see what your snippet will look like when it's inserted. Now let's try it out in Gmail. Type in the shortcut and TextBlaze will insert the corresponding snippet. Notice that the snippet was inserted with the same styling that I specified in the dashboard. By the way, if you ever forget a shortcut, you can still insert your snippet by right-clicking to open the context menu. Or left-clicking on the extension icon and choosing your snippet. Now that we've covered the most basic functionality of TextBlaze, let's see what else we can do with it. But before we do that, here's a quick side note on commands. Commands are little bits of text blaze code surrounded by curly brackets. They allow you to add all sorts of automation in your snippets to save time and avoid mistakes. Commands can also take a variety of settings to give you even more control over what they do. But you'll learn more about that later in this video. You can insert commands by using the menu at the bottom or by typing them manually in your snippet. Now let's have a look at our first command, form text. I'd like to customize the recipient's name in this email. I can do that by using a form text command to create a customizable text field in my snippet. To insert a text field, place your cursor where you want your text field to be inserted. Click on the Forms and Dynamic Content menu at the bottom and choose text field. The pop-up allows me to specify three settings for this command. The name, the default value, and the width. We'll leave these empty for now and just insert a plain text field, which shows up here as a form text command surrounded by curly brackets. Let's test our snippet by typing in the shortcut. You'll notice that this time the snippet is not inserted immediately. Instead, a pop-up appears, prompting me to fill in a text field, and whatever I put in that text field shows up inside my snippet when I insert it. Now, I want to reuse the recipient's name I entered at the beginning. To do this, I can add the name setting we saw earlier to my form text command. First, let's delete our old form text command and insert a new one, this time adding the name setting, which functions as a label for the contents of the text field. 
Let's give it the label recipient. Now I can reference the recipient label elsewhere in my snippet and whatever I put in the text field with that name will show up wherever I need it. When you're juggling a million things a day, it's easy to make mistakes. Let's add a note to remind us to update the dates in this snippet. Place your cursor where you want your note to be inserted. Click on the Forms and Dynamic Content menu and choose the Note command. In the pop-up, write whatever you want to show up in the note. Now, when we type our shortcut, the note shows up in the pop-up, but not in the snippet when it is inserted. Let's make things even more practical and error-free. Instead of manually changing the date every time and risk making a mistake, I can use a dynamic time command. First, let's get rid of this date. Now, with my cursor in place, I click the current date button on the menu. There are many date options we can choose, but let's go with long full date, which gives me the current date in full whenever I insert my snippet. By the way, there is also a command to insert the current time if you need it. It works just like the current date command. Now wouldn't it be convenient if we could make this future date dynamic too? Actually we can. The text place time command can take the shift setting, which allows you to dynamically insert future or past dates and times. Let's get rid of this date and use the time and date shifting menu to insert the date in one day. And here's what it looks like when we insert our snippet. The time command is incredibly flexible. Here are a few examples of what you can do. If you want to explore all of the possibilities, we've got a detailed walkthrough page that will help you out. Here's one more option for adding dates to your snippets. With the form date command, you can include a date selector in your snippet. Form date lets you specify the formatting of the date to be inserted. And the date range for the selection. There are also other settings you can use to customize the command but you can learn more about them in the dedicated video. TextBlaze can also work out calculations and formulas. These are very similar to the formulas found in Excel and Google Sheets. Here I've added a simple calculation. Let's replace these numbers with text fields. One named quantity, the other named price. Now let's use the contents of those text fields inside a formula to multiply those two values together and get the result. Just like commands, formulas are contained within curly brackets. So let's start with an open curly bracket followed by the equals sign. Next comes the name of the first text field then an asterisk which represents the multiplication sign and the name of the second text field. Finally, we wrap up our formula with a close curly bracket. Formulas are a pretty powerful feature, so if you'd like to know more, we've got a video that focuses specifically on that. Now, I want to add an optional piece of text to my email. I can do this with a toggle field, which can be found in the Forms and Dynamic Content menu. Once again, you can add an optional name setting, 
but this time you can also choose to make the toggle field on or off by default. The contents of your toggle field go here. Now, when I run the snippet, I can choose to show or hide this bit of text as needed. I can also add the option to offer different discount amounts. For this, we can use a drop-down menu field, also found in the Forms and Dynamic Content menu. You can set your drop-down menu to accept one or multiple options as required. And you can add or remove the number of options here. The text for the various options goes in these fields. Here's what it looks like in action. Make sure you play around with this command because there's a lot you can do with it. As your snippet library starts growing, you'll find that you're using certain bits repeatedly in your snippets. With the import command, you can import one snippet into another. Here, I've created a snippet with an email signature. In this other snippet, I'm using the import command to bring the contents of the signature snippet into this snippet by referencing its shortcut. TextBlaze allows you to share snippet folders. This is especially useful when working within a team. To do this, navigate to the folder you want to share, click on the Sharing tab, and enter the email addresses of the people with whom you want to share the folder. Here, you can specify the access level for this group of users. Viewer permissions allow the user to view and use the snippets in the folder. Editor permissions allow the user to view, edit and use the snippets, while owner permissions give full access. Finally, click Share Folder Access to share your snippet folder with the recipients. Once you've invited a user to your snippet folder, you can modify or revoke their permissions here. Business and enterprise plans cater for an increased number of users and offer greater control over team sharing and access setting. This video is just an overview of the basic functions that TextBlaze offers, but we've barely scratched the surface. If you want to learn more about how to save time with TextBlaze, make sure you check out our other videos and the documentation section. There is also a growing community of TextBlaze users like yourself where you can ask questions and exchange tips and advice.